All right, uh, we're going to get started here. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you here. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Helm support in Argo CD. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to int introduce myself. My name is Remington Breeze. Uh, I'm a founding software engineer at Acuity uh, and an Argo project maintainer. Uh, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks, Remington. Uh, everyone can hear me, hopefully. So. Uh, my name is Alexander Matyushensev. Uh, yes, I'm uh, also working at a company called Acuity with Remington. Uh, company Acuity is founded by Argo Creators, proud to say it. And uh, uh, I've been a long time maintainer of Argo project, same as Remington. So thanks. Thanks, Alex. All right. Um, so the differences between installing a Helm application with Argo CD um, versus natively with Helm install, uh, they're not always immediately obvious. Um, so to discuss the differences, we actually uh, have to have a basic understanding of Argo CD and what it's doing behind the scenes. So that's what we're going to start with today. Uh, we'll first give a high-level overview of the reconciliation process, uh, and then we're going to dive into slightly more detail uh, to describe how Argo CD is, is then applying manifests. Uh, and then finally, we'll discuss how this relates to a support of different config management tools um, before we dive deeper into Helm specifically. Um, so installing Helm applications with Argo CD uh, has a number of benefits, uh, which includes automatic dependency install, uh, integration with the UI, um, and Helm hook support, uh, which we'll cover here as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, because of uh, the automatic dependency resolution, uh, uh, it allows conveniences around private repositories as well. Um, so after uh, I give a simple demo of uh, a simple Helm application uh, installed with Argo CD, uh, Alex is going to compare uh, two popular real-world approaches to deploying Helm charts with Argo CD in the wild, um, one of which uh, is a beta Argo CD feature, which we're pretty excited to showcase to you here today. Um, and then to conclude, Alex is going to give a demo um, of how this new feature makes it really easy to synthesize configuration from different sources. All right, um, so to understand the differences between native Helm installs uh, and Argo CD Helm installs, uh, we kind of have to take a look at how manifests get applied by Argo CD. Um, so here we have a really high level overview of the reconciliation process. Uh, and we're going to start with the visualization step, which is on the bottom right. Um, so essentially, Argo CD is comparing the live state of your cluster with the desired state in Git. Um, it can also be an OCI repo or a Helm chart, which we'll discuss a little bit more later. Um, but it's essentially running kubectl diff. Uh, and it's a little bit more complex behind the scenes, but uh, for our conversation today, uh, that's what matters. Uh, so the next step is going to be applying the changes to synchronize your cluster with Git. And we often say that Argo CD is essentially a glorified kubectl apply. Uh, and this is the step where that kubectl apply happens. And then after the synchronization happens, the cycle repeats, and we're going to have to pull manifests again. Uh, and this is essentially Git clone. Uh, as I mentioned, it can be OCI or Helm, um, but it's, it's basically Git clone behind the scenes. And here we have essentially the same process. It's the same diagram, but with some more detail. Um, and first on the left, we have the visualization, uh, pro the visualization step again. Um, but you can see the components that are responsible for it. And that's going to be the API server. Um, and it provides data to the user interface. And uh, we're going to show you guys the user interface later if you haven't seen it. Um, and then it also communicates with Cube API uh, to manage application custom resources. Um, and then next is the apply step, which you saw in the last slide again. Um, so the application controller is the one that's actually performing the kubectl apply step. Uh, and it's also communicating with Cube API to store the live application and cluster state in Redis. Uh, and then it's monitor monitoring those application CRs um, for changes. And then finally, the part that's most relevant to us today um, is on the far right. Um, and that's the repository server, uh, which, per which is performing that Git clone that you saw before. Um, and we're going to dive into a little bit more detail with that. So zooming in uh, on the right-hand side of that graph, uh, you see that the re repo server um, is actually not pulling raw, valid Kubernetes YAML most of the time. Um, instead, what's usually happening is that users are using a config management tool. Uh, so Helm is one example of this, uh, customizing JSON it or other examples. 
Uh, and Argo CD supports all three out of the box, customize uh, Helm and JSON it. Uh, but the question is really, how do we get from this templatized version of YAML to valid Kubernetes YAML that then gets applied to your cluster? Because um, it's pretty rare to actually just be storing the, the valid YAML uh, in Git. So what's happening is the repository server, uh, it fetches your configuration files, and then it executes a binary uh, against those files, which spits out the valid YAML. Um, so this allows users to specify dynamic parameters. Um, since the uh, Argo CD rendering is happening on top of what's stored on Git rather than the other way around. Um, and what this also means that it, is that it's relatively easy to extend this process with plugins. So if you have a custom templating language um, that you like to use or, or a very unique use case, as long as you have a binary which is accepting really any input and outputting valid Kubernetes YAML, uh, it can then be kind of turned into an Argo CD config management plugin. But back to Helm, um, what this really means is that Argo CD is not performing a Helm install as you would traditionally think of it um, when you install a Helm application with Argo CD. Uh, instead, what we're doing behind the scenes is running Helm template and passing the output of Helm template uh, to kubectl apply. Uh, so the consequence is that you don't actually have a Helm release when you install a Helm chart with Argo CD. Um, however, the Argo CD application, uh, it kind of takes the place of this Helm release. Uh, and in fact, it has a number of benefits over a, a traditional Helm release. So you can see here uh, the main differences uh, between a Helm application deployed with Argo CD versus one with a traditional Helm install. So on top, you have traditional. On bottom, you have Argo CD. And what you can see is that there's essentially one-to-one -one parity. Um, so on top is Helm LS, and on bottom is Argo CD app list. Um, and most of the fields match, or if there's not an exact one-to-one -one match, there's a similar match. Uh, so one of the benefits that I mentioned uh, of using Argosy to manage these Helm applications is dependency management. So chart dependencies get pulled automatically, uh, and if you commit those dependencies to Git ahead of time, um, your deployment isn't going to fail if the chart goes offline. Uh, hooks are also a pretty popular Helm feature, uh, and Argo CD has a solution to make sure that uh, the hooks that you're relying on don't disappear when you install your chart with Argo CD. Um, so Argo CD also has a concept of hooks. We call them sync hook hooks. There's pre-sync and post-sync um, and a few other types. And essentially what we're doing is mapping Helm hooks to Argo CD hooks. Um, there are some less popular Helm hook types that don't have a clear one-to-one -one mapping, um, and they're not currently supported by Argo CD, uh, but these are pretty rare. Uh, most users don't use them, uh, and Argo CD supports most of the popular use cases. And then finally, a really large benefit of using Helm with Argo CD is the UI. Um, that's kind of a benefit of Argo CD in general, um, but it relates to Helm as well. Uh, so Argo CD is going to detect any parameters that are defined in your values.yaml, uh, and it surfaces them in the user interface, which you can see in the screenshot here. Uh, and I'll show it in a little bit more detail when I get to the demo. So users can easily edit these parameters, which is really useful for troubleshooting. So if you're in a QA or test uh, or any non-production critical environment and you need to really quickly change something, uh, it's super easy to do so in the Argo CD interface. Uh, so in this screenshot, you can kind of see what happens when you do make those changes in the interface. Um, the screenshot that you'll see here is an application, uh, an Argo CD application spec. Uh, and you can see that the spec has been updated with parameters. Uh, it's, a, it's basically a subfield under the Helm field. Um, so that's what's happening behind the scenes when you, when you edit that, uh, those parameters in the UI. And uh, finally, before I get to the demo, uh, I mentioned before that because Argo CD is managing the Helm dependencies for you, it adds some convenience around private repositories. Um, so if you're using Helm install natively, you must uh, download those Helm repositories and somehow figure out authentication locally uh, with your local environment. But because Argo CD is kind of handling this all for you, um, we offer out-of-the-box support for HTTPS repos, OCI Helm repos, and private repos. Um, yeah, so I'd like to turn to a demo. Um, great. Oops. All right, so here I have an Argo CD application. Uh, if you've never seen the Argo CD user interface, this is what it looks like. 
Um, so we have all of the resources that are in this application uh, displayed in a really nice tree view. Um, and what this is deploying is an off-the-shelf WordPress uh, Helm chart. And I'm actually going to show you what this repository uh, looks like. So this is what that application was pointing to. The, this is all the files that are in that application. Uh, and it's pretty simple. There's a chart.yaml, um, a readme, which gives some docs, and then two values.yaml files. Um, so if we look at this chart.yaml, uh, you can see that it, it is really just uh, off-the-shelf WordPress. It's pinned to a version. Um, and it's, it's a community-maintained chart. Um, and then, uh, like I said, in the higher directory, we have a couple values files. So in this application, I deployed it with MariaDB installed. So MariaDB is a subchart of WordPress um, that is just included with the WordPress chart. Um, but you may have noticed that the second values file that was available is uh, values no MariaDB. So you can install this without MariaDB. So we're going to uh, show the uh, ability of Argo CD to quickly toggle that. So if you go to the parameters section that we showed on the slides, um, you'll see that we have these parameters uh, similar to what you saw before. But up top, we have uh, a values section. And that's because Argo CD detected that there are two values files. And we can actually remove the original one and add uh, the values no Maria. And I'll click Save. It'll take a couple seconds. And you'll notice now that this application went out of sync. Uh, and you'll also notice that a bunch more parameters became available to us because instead of having a built-in DB, we now have an external DB that we have to configure. So Argo CD intelligently detected that that values file contains a lot more options. Um, and basically, the reason that this application became out of sync is because pruning is turned off. It's not going to delete all of these DB resources for you. Um, and Argo CD is saying, oh, I noticed that there are components installed here that shouldn't be. Um, but instead of deleting them uh, to get it back in sync, uh, what I'll do is just change the values file back, and we'll see that this uh, application goes back in sync. And it's uh, healthy and synced. All right, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Alex, uh, and he'll take over for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. You can see my whole screen. I have just one slide and a demo. <clears throat> and so, um, as Remington described, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about real life use cases. And as you know, <clears throat> in real life, we do have to deal with a little bit of more complexity. Not often we deploy uh, an application that is just packaged into one um, Helm chart. Usually we need something else, like we need additional services. And here is the slide that kind of tries to visualize this additional complexity. And I will start from just describing what I tried to visualize here. I will start from the left top corner. And here I have uh, two, very f uh, two dependencies that we see very frequently, which is Redis and, and Nginx, or any kind of proxy. And so the use cases those services are solving is, uh, let's say you're building a Java-based microservice and you need caching. Uh, Redis is a perfect candidate to solve this problem. If you want to improve uh, performance of your, you know, uh, of how your application is serving static assets, Nginx is a great tool. And so, um, what's important here is uh, those popular open source projects also have uh, community maintained Helm charts, and it makes total sense to use those Helm charts instead of replicating the work yourself. Uh, but the problem is community is not going to magically deliver it into your deployment repository. Instead, they make those Helm charts available in a third-party Helm repositories. And so the obvious option that you have is to copy them into your deployment repo, but this will bring a lot of maintenance work. You need to start watching for new version and uh, update Helm charts manually. So that's not uh, convenient at all. So the next example is uh, surprisingly, our own Helm chart. And so what we learned from Argo CD users and from developers, that they prefer to have their, their own Helm chart next to the source code. So, and it's understandable. Uh, so the use case we heard is, um, let's say a developer wants to make a change in the CLI flag. Flag is used in a Helm chart. And so if someone just changed the source code, Helm chart will stop working, and developers wants to 
make those changes in the same pull request. So that's the justification of why Helm chart, it makes sense to have Helm chart in the same source uh, code repository with the, with the code. And so um, again, the process is to uh, publish this Helm chart automatically with the new image into some uh, uh, Helm repository. And so finally, we have one more block here. Uh, so we, wo we do want to have some configuration uh, in Git. Uh, and I'm talking about value files. It makes total sense because usually in those value files, you store settings that are specific to your environments. And that's pretty much what we are managing using GitOps. And uh, so the question is, how do we put, uh, how do we combine all those things together and how do we teach Argo CD to deliver it as one unit during deployment process? So uh, one option, uh, Remington kind of, kind of demonstrated it already. It's called uh, umbrella chart. This is not even a feature of Argo CD. It's just the name of a usage pattern that is available in Helm itself. And so as you could guess from the name, idea is to create a Helm chart that has no uh, manifests. It only has a chart.yaml file that uh, describes uh, describe list of your dependencies and it has a values file specific to your environment. And so it's perfectly working for many Argo CD users. And in fact, people were using it for like years, but we did heard from community about some uh, disadvantages. And so uh, one complaint uh, is that this uh, chart.yaml file, it's redundant. And the reason is you can describe the same thing in Argo CD application spec. You can point Argo CD directly to the Helm chart, not to Git, and you can specify the value file. So why, why do you, are you forced to uh, create an umbrella chart if this value file is located in a, if you want to have this Helm chart in your uh, Git repository? And so we agreed to that, and then we've got an, another complaint. So Argo CD has a feature uh, where it can follow the version. Basically, you can provide the target version, which doesn't have a fixed version. Instead, it contains same your range expression, and uh, Argo CD is supposed to detect new uh, Helm chart versions that matches this expression, and it will automatically upgrade your uh, application. And uh, this feature does not, is not available to you if you are using Umbrella Helm chart. So we listened to that feedback and we decided to work on it. And last year, we finally delivered a better solution that addresses those uh, concerns. And the feature is called uh, multiple sources. And that's pretty much a different way of deploying together a set of manifests that are located in, in different uh, sources. And so as you can guess from the name, uh, Argo CD application got a new, got an ability to describe multiple sources in a single uh, application. And uh, it solves actually several use cases, but the Helm use case was the primary driver to actually build that feature. And uh, YAML on this uh, slide demonstrates how you can deploy an Nginx uh, using off-the-shelf Nginx Helm chart with the value files that are stored in your private Git repository. And so Argo CD behind the scene will take care of extracting content of a Helm chart, it will download the repo, and it will make files available of, of, this, private, uh, of this private repo available to the Helm template command. Uh, and that's pretty much the feature that I'm going to demonstrate right now. Uh, in yeah, you will see how, how you can use exactly, uh, how you can use Argo CD to deploy an application like that. Uh, so I kind of, I spent some time and I created an application specifically for this demo. I'm kind of do, doing this demo backwards. And the reason is I want to show you how it's up and running. And then I want to make a change and demonstrate how Argo CD will detect a new version of my Helm chart and uh, upgrade this application. And uh, another, I want to demonstrate some of the functionality of this application. Obviously, it's not real uh, payment service, uh, but it has this make payment button, and every time I click it, it's going to increase a counter. If I refresh this page, counter stays the same because I have a little backend. I, I use Redis as a database to store number of clicks. Uh, 
so it's working perfectly, except it has this terrible red background. So I want to improve it a little bit, and I want to make a change in my source code to have a slightly better background. And so here you can see a repository which has the source code of my application. And by the way, it has a Helm chart as well. So here is my payments Helm chart. It has real templates, no dependencies. So it's just a Kubernetes deployment and Kubernetes service. Uh, and now I'm going to make a change. It's a simple Go application that serves an index.html file plus a couple API methods. So to improve the background, I can make a change right here. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I could think of a better color, but let's... <laughs> okay, let's make it blue, I agree. Uh, blue is a little better. All right, so we did a change, and I have a little automation that publishes a new release, publishes a new Helm chart, uh, every time I create a new release. So I need to create a new 19 release. And that's it. It should trigger a workflow. And workflow will create a new version of our Helm chart. OK, it started. All right, while it's running, we have time to see how exactly this application is deployed. And so here it is. Here is uh, Argo CD. You know how uh, UI looks like already because Remington uh, showed it to us. So here is my payments deployment, and the rest of it, the rest of this application is uh, Redis. So I used uh, HA version of Redis, highly available Redis, and uh, it's up and running. So, but the main reason, main uh, configuration part that I want to show you is Argo CD spec. As you can see, it uses multiple sources. And so I have three sources here. One is uh, the Helm chart of my application. Uh, and my, my repository is just uh, powered by GitHub pages. And as we speak, there is a workflow, uh, GitHub action that is pushing a new Helm chart into this uh, Helm repository. Uh, so what's important here, my application is supposed to be automatically upgraded every time when there is a new Helm chart published. A new patch release of my Helm chart. Uh, and uh, next, I have a values file that are stored in my deployment repository. I'm going to show you that repository in a second. Before I go there, I want to highlight this uh, second dependent, second source, which is just the off-the-shelf uh, Helm chart uh, that uh, provide me uh, Redis. And now I can show you my deployment repo. So. Deployment repo is extremely boring on purpose. It has no manifests, has no Helm charts. It's just the value files of my, let's say, QA environment. And so this is exactly what I wanted to achieve, to only put in Git configurations that I care about. And it's time to check how workflow is doing. So a new Helm chart was created, <coughs> images built and pushed to GitHub pages. So if I'm lucky, Argo CD it detects changes every five minutes, so I had to click refresh button, and it should detect a change right now. Oh, it happened. So we can use Argo CD UI to see what exactly changed, and as expected, just a new image got pushed, uh, so new Helm chart, which uses a new, vir uh, new image by default. So now I can go ahead and sync, sync my application. So Argo CD will perform the deployment, Okay, I can see the port just got created. I use port forwarding here, so I need to restart port forward, and we can check the new background. <laughs> okay, I hope I hope you like it more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. Please provide us feedback. So here is your um, it's the QR code that will lead you to feedback form and. Thanks a lot for listening. We are happy to answer any questions. Uh, right. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, is there a better support for authentication to ECR for the Helm charts rather than cron job that uh, mm -hmm. updates the secret of the 
Yeah. So I, I'll repeat the question. So is there a way to support better way of authentication to uh, OCR? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Maybe. I, so I uh, I know that Argo CD supports one way of authenticating to OCR. OCR. You can provide username and token, but maybe I'm missing some use case. Can you? Oh, I see. OK, oh, so the problem is uh, Amazon, like if you use uh, OCR, the token expires periodically. Mm. OK, I think the answer is short. It's no, I, I don't know the better way to do it unless Amazon itself supports some kind of a service that works as a proxy. And then, yeah, uh, I never heard about it, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh, so the answer is no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a good feature. Sure. Um, so one of the things I've run into is with Helm template, mm -hmm. it won't do a lookup against like the cluster. Is that considered like an anti-pattern, or is it something that you have to like look uh, up? Oh. How do you do a cluster lookup mm -hmm. with the Helm template? Yeah. I will repeat the question, and please correct me if I'm wrong. So I think the question is, how do we get cluster information into the Helm chart? Because we need it during templating. I think we're kind of improving it over time, step by step. One improvement was made maybe a year ago. So now in the Helm chart, you can know the cluster version and available, and available APIs. So literally, Argo CD just provided via CLI flags, list of available APIs. And so you can have if else expressions. You might, you might say, if cluster version is less than something, then do this. Or you can say, if extensions deployment available, then do that. And then we didn't want to provide uh, kind of full access, like you cannot look up something from the managed cluster from the Helm template for security reasons. Mainly, it was, it, we didn't think it was secure because repo server uh, man, performed manifest generation for all tenants. So nothing stopped you from doing something bad. But uh, with config management plugins, it's better now because config management plugins are running kind of in a sandbox and they cannot do that damage. So the remaining step is to migrate Helm support into the same kind of architecture. And then we already discussed and we are open to support, like basically lookup function on, of Helm. So it's like step by step improving. I hope we will get there eventually. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So you changed the app. You didn't need to change, create a new Helm chart, but you still created a new Helm chart. It's just so that the uh, I, I, I didn't have to change the app. I, I wanted to just demonstrate that the feature that like, users of Argo CD wanted, this automatic upgrade, it, it's possible even if you have like a Helm chart and the value file. Uh, yeah, so when I made the change, I, maybe I didn't explain it well, the workflow that was running in background, it published a new Helm chart version. So my, my registry, uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, Helm repository, got one, sorry, 0, 1.19 version, and Argo CD detected it, and then it, it used it instead of 1.17. Yeah. So you just started using the multi-source pattern as well, and uh, one of our questions was, yes, we can use the wildcard to auto-update the new mid versions, but if we were to roll back from there, let's see something comes up, or if we were to roll back, what would be the best method of rolling back if we have the wildcard to have that I, I think yeah, I think the best way to roll back is to when you there is a functionality when you can sync Argo CD and you can specify what version you want it to be synced to. Uh, so you can git yeah basically if let's say if you use git or if you use uh, Helm you can specify exact version and so Argo CD will become out of sync. But if you're in a situation when there is a disaster, then that's acceptable. And then you can change git to kind of match this version. Mm -hmm. But is there, like, what do you recommend is the best way, or what do you guys suggest for dry runs for any updates or app creation? Um, a dry run is there to, vol to do validation. Basically, if you make some changes and you want to know, is Kubernetes going to accept new manifests? Uh, yeah, this is what it's there for. And maybe, maybe you're referring to a bug. We recently just discussed it. So if Argo CD has auto sync enabled, is it what you're talking about? Uh, it doesn't want you to sync to any version, and uh, there was a bug where it enforces, it doesn't want to sync it even if you are doing dry run, and we just uh, 
it's a, it's a, yeah, we didn't think about it. So basically this restriction, I think it's already removed in master. So dry run flag should not prevent you from syncing to any version, even if auto sync is enabled. So it, it used to do it, but due to a mistake. So now it will be fixed. So by default, with Helm 3, the install process will install custom resource definitions, but on an upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, Helm 3 decided not to mm -hmm. upgrade custom resources. Yes. So Helm template has a flag to uh, include the, the custom resources. Does Argo follow the same suit as Helm, which they, they chose mm -hmm. not to upgrade CRDT because of the potential for data loss? Mm -hmm. Does it only installed it doesn't upgrade them to upgrade mm -hmm. manually, or does it always upgrade the CRDs? Yeah. I, I will quickly repeat just, uh, so there was a change in Helm.3 where Helm no longer touches CRDs when upgrade is happening, correct? Yeah, and so, no yeah. longer installs CRDs. Yeah, and so the question is, does Argo CD, is, is it doing the same? So I think answer is, is no. So we, Argo CD will make a change in CRDs, even if there is upgrade. And I think the answer is it's kind of questionable behavior. I don't, I know that some Helm users don't know, don't, yeah. <laughs> and so we, like, we didn't hear strong feedback to make the same change in Argo CD. So right now Argo CD will update CRDs. Like, let's say if you, if you need a, to do an upgrade and your CRD has a new versions, Argo CD will go ahead and, and update it. Only thing that Argo CD is doing special about CRDs it never deletes them, which is also, some people don't like it, but it, it's just, if you're deleting an application, but an application included CRDs, CRDs will stay. Uh, that's. Question. Oh, so, clearly the multiple sources is just going to read those. It doesn't require help for that. So if we have. Oh, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're doing like GitOps and we have all of our manifests already, mm -hmm. say render, but then we also want another folder for, say, CRDs, mm -hmm. and we list those as separate. Yeah, correct. correct. Yeah, so you don't have to, it, you can use just multiple Git repositories. So the, I mentioned some other use cases. There is just one another use case. Like, let's say you have several building blocks of the same application. You, you just want to combine them together. You, you can do it. Yeah, you can just specify several Git repositories. I think I will try to repeat, but I, I didn't follow up with one minute. <laughs> now you create a project, mm -hmm. which you pursue. Mm -hmm. So let's say I have, I'm using GitLab, and I'm going to create a project in uh, Python, and mm -hmm. like two or three books. I think probably, if I understood it correctly, there, there is no such functionality. Like, it basically, you kind of now, but the only thing that multiple source sources let you is you have this fixed source of, and if you talked about Argo CD, Argo CD project, correct? So if you, if application referencing multiple sources, those sources just must be uh, allowed in, in the Argo CD project, so no, like there is no the, the, uh, no dynamical decisions can be made. Do you? I think you. I, I don't have anything yeah. that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you talking about an Argo CD project? Yeah, I, I think the long story short is no, no um, yeah. not, not at the moment, yeah. yeah, not yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. right, I think yeah, yeah, we're just think we're getting a signal that we run out of time, yeah. but thanks a lot for Thank your questions. Yeah. Thanks everyone.